false imprisonment at a car dealership, and a $100,000 settlement. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high-intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth as we react to Dan Whitney's false imprisonment case at a dealership and a $100,000 settlement. As our followers know, the Homework Guy channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. We give you great car buying strategies and let you know of what to be aware of. Well, today's video is about some of the truly ugly behaviors you see on a car lot. And this dealer, whose actions go from bad to worse. Before we roll the video, I want to give a big shout out to Dan Whitney. He has done a stellar job, been one of the most remarkable attorneys leading the charge against shady dealers. He does an exceptional job on this one. Let's roll the video. Hi, this is Dan Whitney with the Whitney Law Firm in Towson, Maryland. Um, today I'm going to talk about the $100,000 false imprisonment lawsuit against a car dealership here in Maryland uh, that Tom McParland wrote about uh, in his article uh, on Jalopnik in, in early yes, February. He did. So first of all, uh, thank you, Tom uh, and Jalopnik, for uh, writing about that. I, I appreciate uh, getting the interest. Um, so false imprisonment in car dealerships, uh, the two terms don't really go together uh, until you think about all the different shenanigans that car dealerships can get up to on their never-ending quest to squeeze money out of customers. <laughs> uh, so Ain't that the I truth. sue a lot of car dealerships uh, here in Maryland, um, new car dealerships, used car dealerships. Um, a lot of them are up to no good, and a lot of them have a, an un, uh, unending number of schemes that they deploy on unsuspecting customers. But in this particular case, what happened is a woman went to go buy a vehicle, and during the purchase process, she discovered that the price from the buyer's order to the finance contract ha had been increased by over a thousand dollars and she saw this and she did not want to sign but um, her situation was such that her she had just had an accident and she needed new transportation so effectively she said to the finance manager I see what you're doing here I don't like it uh, and because they refused to uh, make the numbers be accurate and um, decrease the finance contract back to the buyer's order price, uh, she said, fine, I'm going to buy it, but I don't like what you're doing here. And she signed anyway and took the card, of course. Well, I'm going to pause here for a moment because I want to tell people, don't sign stuff that you're not comfortable with. Now, this is going to work out for the best for this customer, but don't sign stuff you're not comfortable with, man. Just don't. Yeah, a cab costs way less than $1,000. So, I mean, call a friend, get a ride. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She's telling you that you can spend thousands by signing that paper that you shouldn't mm -hmm. and just spend a few bucks on a cab and get a ride home. Don't do that kind of stuff. Even though you sign, you still have legal rights. It's not like just because you signed, you're done and they've cheated you and they've won. That's only the beginning. <laughs> That's a really good thing for people to know because just because you signed the dotted line does not mean that your legal rights are gone. I hope you heard that loud and clear. And when things happen that happen like in this situation, you always need to get a hold of an attorney and get it straightened out. So she signs and she's upset, but she takes her vehicle and leaves. So she comes back um, approximately several weeks later to deal with the paperwork issue and she runs into the GM and the GM says to her, well, she says to him, you know, I'm very upset about what happened. And she goes through it again. And he says, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you, uh, I'll refund you the money that essentially they increased uh, the price by, but you have to sign a confidential uh, release. Because wow. he doesn't want the customer to report this to other people. Right. Doesn't want other people to know the dealership was trying to swindle her. Yeah, that's a CYA. <laughs> yeah, cover. Yeah, cover your assets, right? And she, being an extremely strong person and strong woman, says, "Not only uh, am I not signing this, but now I'm going to tell everybody that you tried to force me to sign this in order to get my money back. I'm not doing it, and I'm even more upset now." And the the GM refused to just give her. Uh, the overage that they charged her uh, back without the release, uh, confidential release. So what happens next is there's an issue with her temp tags. 
Classic. And uh, she gets a text the day before. So these are the temp tags on the vehicle. So remember what we said before to people about uh, the possibility that the title for the vehicle actually isn't in the dealership if you keep having to re reissue these temp tags? Correct. So here this dealer is also going into more shady territory by not having her license plates to her on a timely basis either. So she's coming back in a second time for temp tags. Her first set of temp tags expire, and the text says something like, your second set of tags is ready, come on down. She says, okay, fine. So she comes down from where she is, and she parks uh, at the dealership, and uh, she goes inside to talk to the GM, and she's told by uh, an employee, the GM will talk to you, but he's back in an office. You have to go talk to him in an office. She says, I just want my tag. I don't want to fool around. Just give me my tag. They said, well, if you want the tag, you got to go back to the office. Okay, fine, is what she says. So she gets back to the office, and uh, what she said is that the GM got her in a room with a, a finance manager and said to her, unless you sign this release... Uh, and a buyer's order that matches the increased price on the finance contract that got her to sign. Unless you sign this, and the release, of course, had confidentiality, um, we're not going to give you this second temp tag. Wow. So now they're playing another game here. First of all, on the first visit, she was going to give the money back, but she refused to sign the uh, confidentiality agreement. Mm -hmm. And then now he's actually wanting to increase the buyer's order. What people need to know is the buyer's order and the finance contract, they have to match. Yes. They have to match. That's what we say. Look at the buyer's order when you're doing your paperwork. Make sure you actually have your hands on it. Look at the number. Make sure it's right. Yes. The buyer's order is what's going to go to the bank. She says, no, I'm not doing it. And they refuse. So she says, Good fine, I'm leaving. So she goes back out to the parking lot where she had backed in. And what does she see? But one of the dealer's vehicles has now parallel parked right in front of her so she's stuck what happens next but the gm comes out um while she's sitting in her truck because she's so angry she doesn't know what to do she's sitting there he comes around with the screwdriver and starts taking off the temp tag although it has expired it has not expired yet it expires that night uh, or at midnight so it's still her tag and it's still valid he doesn't even yet have any right to, to do this right so she calls my office. She doesn't know what to do. And we've been talking about the $1,500 uh, overcharge already. And um, it turned out that the best solution in this, this high pressure, uh, high emotion situation was to call the police, which she did. So she calls. The police are dispatched. They Good go move. out. Uh, there's some body cam footage. And it, it's approximately an hour before the uh, GM agrees to move. Uh, the truck that he had caused to be parked in front of her. But so wow. they're physically holding her yeah. at the dealership with a truck. Now, we put out a video on held hostages at a dealership. What are some of the other ways, Liz, that uh, dealers will hold customers hostage at their dealership? Well, they can keep or hide the keys to your trade so you can't leave the deal and just get in your, your old car and leave. Right. Um, and hey, I want to touch on that for just a moment because... If you have an older car that has keys you can make copy of, we'll always give them a, a copy. But if you have a, one of the vehicles with a, a really expensive fob, there's a couple things you can do here. You can put a fob underneath the seat or hide it somewhere in the car where the car will operate without the dealer actually putting their hand on the fob. The other thing is, is they always say they got to send a, uh, an employee with you while you test drive their car. So you hop into your own car when they take your trade for a drive and never give them the fob to begin with. So that's a way of dealing with that key problem. So what are the other things? Um, they Sometimes we hear that people are trying to keep the driver's license. You know, we need to take your license information, make copies, but then they never actually give it back to you. Um, they could even hide your trade in on the lot or park it somewhere where you can't even find it. So they pretend like they're looking at the vehicle uh, or, or actually are looking at the vehicle, whatever the case might be. But they move your vehicle somewhere else so you can't leave the dealership even if right. you wanted to. So a lot of different ways that dealers can hold you hostage in the dealership. This one, uh, blocking a customer in physically with a vehicle is a really, really underhanded, nasty trick. But they're going to get to pay for it. Watch this. Finally, it gets moved. So after she leaves, uh, she calls me 
and I immediately send a letter um, to the dealership that says you must preserve all audio, video, surveillance footage uh, of everything, preserve it on, on this date and these times. And, and you know, to their credit, um, of course, they're required to. They do. Smooth move, uh, Dan. And so what happens next is a lawsuit is filed. As part of the discovery process, we get all those recordings. And sure enough, the uh, thank goodness they had a great surveillance system. <laughs> that works against truck them. pulling in and parking. You see her going in. And then almost once she hits the door, you can see a lot attendant pull up another vehicle and just block her right in. There's no two ways about it. That's what they did. Although after the fact, uh, they texted her and said, you parked in one of our um, car rental spots. We didn't mean to block you in. But Bull that was crap. a complete and total lie. Uh, they did mean to block her in. That's exactly what they did. And that's why they didn't move the car for an hour. So anyway, uh, after suit was filed, uh, nature took its course. There was a mediation and the case ended up getting resolved for $100,000. All Boom. right. So there's other ways that false imprisonment can arise. Hiding keys, um, blocking people in, of course, is what happened here. Uh, and really, I don't want to say there's a limit. There's an infinite number of ways a car dealership can trick somebody and cause them to be stuck. Uh, there's not enough time. To, and they to use a ton of those tricks. Right. I hope this has been interesting. Uh, if you want to read or uh, watch any more videos, we've got some more on the YouTube channel. So thanks a lot. Um, thanks for watching. Tom, thanks again for writing the article. Yeah, way to go, Dan. All right. So he did a fantastic job here on this situation. And make sure you, we'll put a link here for the uh, Whitney Law Firm's uh, YouTube channel. They have a, a relatively small following, but we love sharing Dan's content, especially stuff that he does around dealers because it's always uh, spot on. So if you don't have somebody in your area to help, uh, get a hold of the Whitney Law Firm. But in every case, when stuff like this happens, get a hold of an attorney. You can always, you know, try to work this thing out with the dealers. But you know what? They're just getting uglier and nastier as time goes on. Make them pay. You could have a hundred thousand dollar settlement there waiting with your name on it to. Give those little ugly boogers at the dealership some comeuppance. <laughs> you know, I kind of wish that the gal had brought someone with her, um, just a friend or anyone else to to support her during this this process, especially after that ver that first tenacious visit. Like, why not have a buddy back you up? So, yeah, take help whenever things go south or you're not really sure about something at the dealership. Take a witness. So, this worked out well for her. Uh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, in summary, car dealers will try to bully you. In a number of ways, if you let them, and if they think they can get away with it, well, it's up to you to stand your ground. And as Liz just said, bring some help, bring some witnesses, and then make sure you hold them accountable just as this customer did. So congratulations again to Dan and Whitney for playing a part in making this dealer pay. If you appreciated this video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list here on the screen and you can find them in the description box down below. And if you're new here, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people now. You might as well benefit from all the content that they've seen too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box below or on our website. And no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us is to share this video with your family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. And then encourage them to subscribe as well and ring that notification bell so they don't miss a thing. We're here to represent car buyers and that's exactly what we do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with The Amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.